Hey guys, it's JSM Snakes here. And today I will be doing a video on starting a Royal Python breeding business. Um, it, it appears to be a popular trend these days to almost invest in royals, which to be honest I don't have a lot of um, problems with. I know a lot of people do saying you shouldn't get into animals purely to breed and make profit, but to be honest, as long as the animals are being cared for and you're not all about the money, then I think it's completely fine. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a few tips that I've acquired over the past few years about what I know about raw python breeding, um, the best way to do it in my opinion, um, some good morphs to start off with and things like that. So if you're interested in turning raw python breeding into a business, I think this will, I think this will be a good video for you to watch and uh, hopefully you can learn a few things from this video. Okay, so I think a good place to start when you're coming to raw python breeding is you want to know what the animal is. Now, raw pythons are a medium-sized um, python that will get to about four or five feet long um, and can live quite comfortably in something called racking systems. Now, this is an image of a racking system and uh, these are used by commercial breeders uh, mainly and what these do is they are adequate housing for adult royal pythons or hatchlings that can be used for both and it allows you to hold a lot of royal pythons. Now that is what most people use. Um, if I ever bred royal pythons I would only use racks for hatchlings, maybe juveniles and I would use viv for all my adults. That's only because I'm not getting many adults though. Um, racks, there are, there's a lot of controversy to them, some people say they're fine, some people don't like them. To be honest, I feel that if you can use vivs, you should, because you're just giving them the most amount of space uh, possible, but to be honest, I don't have that many problems with racks. Um, like I said at the start, as long as the animal's healthy, then I think it's fine. Now, royal python breeding is... It's not complicated. A lot of people try and make um, some cool combos because obviously it's all about the morphs. So in this little bit I'm going to be talking about uh, what morphs are a good starter morph and um, you know things uh, morphs that in my opinion you should have in your collection if you want to be creating some really cool animals. So uh, I'll get into that. Okay, so I think there are five morphs that every royal python breeding collection should have. Now these five morphs are Pastel, Mojave, Spider, Pinstripe, and the last one being Banana. Now these are five, um, these are five morphs, three of them are uh, co-dominant, two of them are dominant in Spider and Pinstripe. Um, I won't be covering the genetics in this video, however, I might be making one in the upcoming weeks uh, about that. So if you want to know more about that, just stay tuned for later on in the weeks. Now, those five genes are very popular with today's market. Um, there are a lot of up-and-coming um, genes that not many people have, but those genes are the most common ones you'll see. And they're, they're what most people are looking for when they're getting pets or looking for other breeding projects. So those are five morphs that I definitely think you should be getting. Um, my favourite of those uh, is obviously, um, not well not obviously, but is banana. I don't have a banana, how I'd love one. And then the other four genes I have, um, not really because I was, when I bought them I was looking to breed them, but just because I got them and then look, as I've seen throughout the market, I've just seen that those are the most popular ones anyway. So obviously here, this side, here, I've got Lee, my pastel, there I've got Arya, who is my spider Mojave, and up there I've got Coco, who is my pinstripe, and um, yeah, th so they're, they're raw python morphs that you want to be looking at, so they're going to be making your your uh, lemon blast, bumblebees, um, you know, your, uh, your spinners, those are all your basic two gene combos, that, that's what most people are looking for. Uh, obviously, over a few years, you can create something like a super pastel pinstripe Mojave for five gene animal, um, which will probably cost in today's market around a thousand pounds, eight hundred pounds. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but um, obviously, for your first breeding season, you're only going to be creating two or three gene combos. But those are, I think, five morphs that every breeding uh, uh, facility should have. Okay, so when breeding raw pythons, I think the market is something very uh, important to monitor and observe because raw python prices are constantly rising then dropping and um, 
it, the market really is saturated, which basically means there's a lot of them out there. Uh, there's too many royals for people to buy, and a lot of them are becoming unwanted uh, by people. So you really need to consider when reading these royal pythons if you are actually going to be able to sell them. Um, obviously things like putting adverts up on Gumtree Preloved is going to help you with that. However, you really seriously need to consider whether you can sell all your animals because if you have five females laying and they all hack, that's about five eggs each uh, at a minimum. So can you really be selling 30 eggs or 30 babies to people? And if you don't sell all 30, if you only sell 20 and you're left with 10, do you have the space, the money, the time to care for those royals when they grow up? Um, obviously, you always have the possibility, which I know a few uh, so-called bedroom breeders do, which is when they only have a rack for like 12 eggs and they one season they might get um, 15 eggs or th they'll freeze three of the eggs, which once again I have no problem with. A lot of people do it when they have unwanted eggs. Um, that's purely just so that they know that when they hatch out they're going to be able to house them all. So you could consider things like that. However, I don't think anybody really wants to be doing that. So that is something, again, that you need to be considering when breeding your royal pythons. Um, they don't have lots of babies, like corn snakes and milk snakes. Um, however, they do hatch out a bit bigger. And you will need, like, once again, to provide adequate housing for them. They can't all be stored in one tub, as you probably know. But they all need their separate rack, separate tub, a lot of maintenance, um, cleaning, changing water bowls every day. And it all just ties back into can you sell them because there's a lot of there's a lot of rules out on the market, there's a lot of choice. Why are they going to pick yours? And if you can't, you need to be able to deal with that. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about in this uh, raw python breeding uh, how to sell video is just the overall price of everything. Now, if you went from nothing to everything in a day, including the snakes, the racks, the incubators, everything you're gonna need to start up your own raw python uh, breeding business, you're gonna be looking at at least probably 5,000 pounds if you're getting all the professional kit, professional racks, uh, professional incubators. You're gonna be looking at around 5,000 uh, pounds with the snakes, uh, depending on how many you're getting, obviously. But if you take a normal V70 rack, which I think is 12, if you fill all 12 slots with uh, adult snakes, then the rack's going to be like one and a half thousand pounds. Each snake is going to be at least 150 pound each. It all adds up. Um, so that's about five thousand pounds, about eight thousand dollars. So that's obviously if you all uh, if you went straight into it. But obviously over over time, um, it wouldn't be quite so you know impactive. Um, so obviously you need to consider that when like do you really have the funds to be doing this and if you don't should you really be doing it? Uh, I mean like if you only have uh, if you only have 20 like you know a thousand pounds to start up can you really be buying or making the best rack? Can you be getting you know caring for all your animals? Um, you know obviously everything's in proportion so if you only had a thousand pounds you wouldn't buy ten snakes and not have money to care for them you buy two or three and you know just go ap appropriately but um, that does kind of conclude this video obviously I didn't cover every single base in this video because I don't really have time nor do I really have the experience to but um, those are just a few things I picked up over the um, few years I've been keeping snakes and the few things I've been told and I've, I've learnt myself so uh, if you have any um, video suggestions that you want me to cover, please leave them in the comments because video ideas are coming a bit slow at the moment. Um, I only picked this one up last minute um, thanks to my uh, good friend Skipper Reptiles. So uh, go and check him out if you haven't already. Um, so hopefully you have enjoyed and uh, I'll see you all next time. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Like I said, it's been Jacob. Thanks.